Welcome everyone. Um, today I have a very special episode for you guys because I invited one of my friends. Today we have Iga Olivak with us. Uh, did I pronounce it right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we just <laughs> practice it? But <laughs> just, can you just can you say it again? Can you oh, just say it again? Yuck. Oh, well, fine, yeah. Iga and I, we just um, know each other from work. We um, were actually working together for quite some time. When I joined VUGA, Iga was already working there as a character artist and she was actually sitting in front of me, um, like diagonally, and we will almost um, be the last people in the office every evening um, while Iga was doing uh, all her personal stuff every day. We had so much good conversations back then. Um, I really remember those. Today, I basically just want to talk with you about your experience from deciding that you want to go. Um, I also want to talk with you about what were your goals uh, to leave and your expectations, and also maybe what went not quite right or what were your um, experience from the whole process. Hey, okay, yeah, so hi. So, well, first, thank you for the invitation. It's like super, super cool. Like every time like I get to speak like anywhere, it's, it's super fun. So I also practice this way, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so my name is Iga, like everywhere uh, in the internet, I'm Ixon Art, that's my nickname. Uh, Ixon actually is my nickname. Um, and I'm an illustrator, basically. Illustrator, like now, currently, I'm art, di art director uh, working on the Wakadu Chronicles. But at the same time, like freelancing still uh, here a little bit, like a little bit here and there. Mm. Um, and I am, well, digital, but also traditional painter um, as well. I love planner painting. Well, back then when we could <laughs> do it, actually, because now mm. not really. It's yeah, no, now it's not really the time to go for plain air. It's, mm -hmm. it's a bit, oh, I mean, it's actually I mean, quite. Technically, <laughs> technically, I mean, it's cool. First, it's cool. But in yeah. general, like, if you don't really, you know, like, for me, it was mostly traveling uh, uh, for painting. And since we cannot really travel, that's a, that's a brief. <laughs> that's brief the, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I remember back then um, when I joined, you were already an intermediate artist, right? Um, I think so. I don't remember exactly. I think uh, I think you I just I think you just turned intermediate when I joined, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and you were basically doing all the character portraits, so all the character mm -hmm. work. Yeah, character photos, so sometimes cutscenes as well. Yeah, and you stayed at Vuga for how long in total? Almost three years. That was yeah, and like mm -hmm. a year, like when I was out there one year already, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that could be right. So did you work in a company before Vuga, like a big company like Vuga? Uh, not game company. On, mm -hmm. Well, actually, only studio I worked before was animation studio for Loving Vincent, but mm -hmm. not really any game. So I, I got to Vuga as an intern. As I mentioned already, like you've been one of the people who did a lot of personal work. Um, back in the days so back in the days like three yeah. years ago or two years ago you always been one of the persons who did a lot of personal work afterward like i can think like every evening you still sat there like one or two hours um yeah. and you had a very great habit of just doing your own thing continuously I, i would be curious to know like what actually led to the decision of leaving Vuga and taking the risk, taking the financial risk of leaving a company as an established employee and going into the freelance world. Mm -hmm. So, well, the main reason was actually that I just wanted to try something else um, because, yeah, like I was working three years on the same project doing pretty much same stuff, like even even if it was like about different characters, they were still like for exactly the same theme, so uh, 1920s, uh, right? So the topic was the same and even even how they looked, um, you know, it was always the same three quarter view, uh, full body like there. It was it was cool, but I just I just wanted to try something completely else, you know, like more fantasy. Yeah. Like I was always interested in more fantasy stuff uh, mm -hmm. and full like illustration. Like I was doing full illustrations at Wuga too, but it came down to the same topic, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't yeah. really exactly my um, my main theme uh you know to work so so i just wanted to try something else and uh freelancing feel they like felt like the well 
good idea to mm-hmm. work on stuff that you like because mm-hmm. then you have control you should have control like it would be nice if you do uh, have control mm-hmm. over what to work on mm-hmm. and not what uh, you know like because in the studio you are there and mm-hmm. um, your manager tells you like okay today you will work on this sometimes you can um, like have a little bit more control by saying like yeah I would like to take this or not but usually it's not really like you can just say like yeah I don't want to work on that <laughs> yeah you have to do it you know if something is planned then you know somebody has to do it right mm. and uh, when it comes to freelance uh, well it's it, it it comes down a lot to how many like commissions or offers you actually get from people because mm-hmm. if you only get one offer then you also don't have much choice you know uh, mm-hmm. to to work on it or not so um i would say in my case uh well about the risk uh it's not like i decided to quit and you know i just went like to the broad sea without Went bonkers mm-hmm. for example so so for me, the savings were actually the most important thing uh, before going freelance because I, I had like safely, I would say saved for half a year, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of months for me, it was, mm-hmm. you know, like, so basically so... six salaries saved. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. So I could pay my, like, not, not really the salaries because I like, I counted like, okay, so I need to pay rent. I need to pay food. Like, so at least those minimum amounts, you know. Mm. that you need to survive <laughs> like mm. uh, i i had saved uh, you know like a couple of mm-hmm. months mm-hmm. so so i thought like okay even if something doesn't work at all then i can always come back to the studio i mean not come back to wuga in this case but mm. just apply to some other studios and i thought like mm-hmm. if i already have experience working at wuga for three years i have portfolio of different projects because i i did a lot of like work and my portfolio was mostly my personal stuff and not Mm -hmm. stuff right Mm -hmm. Um, so i felt like probably there will be some studio that would like to hire me (laughs) like Mm -hmm. was positive thinking but Mm -hmm. i felt like it shouldn't be that bad and maybe in the worst case like if there's no other studio maybe i can still go back to Wuga, but it would be like Mm -hmm. a a, like completely last um you know last resort So it wasn't like I took a complete risk because, um, because yeah, like if I didn't have any savings and I would decide, mm-hmm. okay, from tomorrow on, I'm freelancing. I mean, it, it is still a risk, right? But you mm-hmm. prepare it for the time, um, yes. which is logical. Yeah. Yes, yes. Another thing is like having social media, you know, and being present um, in the internet. It's also like I, I actually depended a lot on that because I felt like if I um if i announce that okay now i'm freelancing Mm. then there will be actually people who would like something from me you know Mm -hmm. so that that was a big thing like if i didn't have any following base any Mm -hmm. project uh, like any clients that i would work for before because i did Mm -hmm. some smaller jobs you know while working at wuga too so i had some clients that were um like coming back so mm-hmm. at least I knew that some small stuff I would still have mm-hmm. and still um, not only waiting for people to apply to me, but then I could also like, you know, um, reach out to other studios, you know, if I like something, if I like um, some, let's say, um, D&D. Uh, stuff then i could maybe reach out to wizards you know mm. so, I, I remember that uh, i remember that video which was really freaking cool it was about the group of people i think it was also a dnd group all right what you got for us michael so came out a little larger <laughs> <laughs> no, holy <laughs> oh, i thought you might as well go hard right yeah go hard or go home what uh, you got Let's see. Oh, oh, what? Oh, my God. Dude. That is so good. Oh, my God. It looks so good. Oh, my God. You got to look close at the details. Hold on. I got to get everybody that's in this picture. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This video, like, you can 
yeah, you can probably put the link because this mm-hmm. was a crucial moment in my freelance ca- career, I would say, mm-hmm. because um, it, it was actually funny because it was right day or one day after I announced that I went freelance. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, the client who commissioned this uh, D&D group painting uh, reached out to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was working like it was actually my first uh, painting of a group of people because there were like mm-hmm. five people with that background so it was quite complex uh you know mm. i mean i did some portrait paintings for Buga, mm. for like a couple, couple of people but, but was it digital and printed or was it traditional yeah, it was digital and printed it mm-hmm. wasn't traditional mm. so he printed it actually for like uh whole his whole group so like five people mm-hmm. um and yeah so the video is like when he presents the painting of them as their characters mm. um yeah like in the big canvas uh, and they didn't know about it like they knew that they that that he prepared something but they didn't know exactly what was that because yeah. i had to have their pictures um mm-hmm. you know to paint um mm-hmm. their uh, faces properly so so yeah it was like a big moment of surprise for them mm-hmm. and it the, and the video went viral so mm-hmm. this is actually how i got um also so many more commissions at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was right uh, right after you started or you announced that you're going freelance, right? Yes. So it was ba- basically the, the perfect entrance into into freelance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it took me a while to paint it first. Uh, so mm-hmm. actually, like, um, so it was two months uh, before I, like, like, we started to talk about the commissions. Two months later, uh, he already gave it and I published this video he sent me. So yeah, like it was November um, back then. Like I started freelancing in se- September. So in November, uh, we published that video and it went viral. And then I got shit load of emails to answer. That was mm-hmm. actually a super crazy time for me. Like it was super overwhelming uh, mm-hmm. at the same time. Uh, what kind of emails? Like job offers or just oh, different yeah, 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 stuff? Yeah, just mm-hmm. asking for commissions. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, people who would like just the same, you know, having their group painted. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was madness. <laughs> I mean, there was literally like hundreds emails to answer. Of course, like many of them um, wouldn't like progress uh, to like any later stage at all because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people were just interested, like how much this thing can cost, even, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so. Um, I think also many people don't realize how much time you put into <laughs> such painting, yeah. you know, it's like sure, with four different hours or persons, something. Yeah. yeah. So it also needs to cost, right? It's not something super mm. cheap. Uh, so m- I'm sure many of them like, you know, read and like, okay, no, sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> not really what I want to spend on art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Luxury, so. yeah, that, yeah. And was, or an investment depends, right? But um, but so um, that actually enabled you to work on things you wanted to work on um, later on. Yes, yes. So because mostly portraits or or D and D characters, some illustrations. So yeah, yeah. It was mm-hmm. it was a lot of actually a lot of stuff, and I took a lot of stuff, uh, which was a bit <laughs> hard because I didn't want to like really. Um, you know, uh, reject much. Yeah. I mean, I did uh, because if it was uh, it was usually uh, about the theme, you know, that I didn't want to work on sci-fi stuff, for example. So mm-hmm. I, I would usually take just portraits and fantasy characters, some stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but I took a lot. <laughs> you know, I got like a queue okay. of stuff uh, to work on, and especially that it was a timing before Christmas, so so many people wanted to have their commissions you know as christmas presents i actually um also made like an ad on my profile that idea for a christmas present you know like portrait or something so so then i got okay. even more <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> uh, which is stupid because i actually yeah. already had it yeah. was that so, a wise decision <laughs> so so yeah actually you know i stopped taking any new projects in jar- january that time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so yeah so if you want to put it on the timeline i started like september freelancing 
then November was a boom in social mm. media and generally I already stopped taking any more commissions like ever uh, mm -hmm. almost ever because uh, there was just small stuff that uh, I took later mm -hmm. but yeah like whole 2020 I also have to say like it was a bit of them like even though I had already stuff to work on um, mm -hmm. I always like I wasn't always super productive also mm -hmm. because I already started to burn out at that time mm -hmm. you know so literally so, whole, whole so your start was so 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 high so fast that you basically took so yeah. much creative energy to do all that work yeah. yeah I can imagine if it's compressed too much in a short amount of time mm -hmm. if you do a lot of commissions yeah. over two months before you actually I just want to go back to the point um before you decided to go on freelance um because I think it's just um, important to talk about did you have any fears of of what could happen when you go out of the company and decide, okay, I will not be employed anymore. I will do my own thing because you had this great habit of doing your own stuff. And I think that's also what is um, a, a plus point on having an employee job is that you basically do your job on a normal daily basis and you get paid and all the other creative energy you have left in your free time, you can really focus on doing your own stuff without um, thinking about earning money with it. Um, did that change for you? Yes. So if you ask me if I had fears, no, I didn't. Uh, like I thought, no, I just gonna have more time uh, to do, mm -hmm. you know, different mm -hmm. stuff. But how it resulted in that is like I actually didn't have <laughs> more time for myself uh, because then I felt like everything I do, if I already paint, I should be painting that for commissions, you know, which was super shitty because I actually. I actually were I was doing less personal stuff after uh, I started freelancing than you no know, but because I treated a bit treated it like um, that what I do for commissions is already kind of like a compromise between you know what I would do for myself and mm. for work so it felt like yeah you know like I'm painting and it's like stuff that I quite like because most of it was really cool but at some point it really started you know like it's still a commission i still need to rework this face ten thousand times because you know i want it to be perfectly uh, similar mm. to a person who is commissioning you know so mm. it also probably depends on what kind of commission is that like for example now i would say like i would prefer to work on um things that aren't based on real faces for example like if it's like a character it's like D&D character, it doesn't need to have a face of the person who is ordering, you know, because or at least this type of projects could also cost more because, you know, you just need to focus on a bit different things. Um, but yeah, it did, it did change. Yeah, mm. like I can really, really say that I stopped doing as much personal stuff as mm. uh, I thought I would do because even even stuff like planner painting, like I felt when I when I work in the studio, I only have lunch time to go out during the day mm -hmm. and only have evening to work on my personal stuff. But everything mm -hmm. else in between is taken by studio work. But if you have like a whole day, you know, of your time mm -hmm. and then you can. <laughs> you also have to say something. <laughs> But now when you have a whole day, you can plan mm -hmm. it by yourself. Mm -hmm. It feels like the more the more hours you put into your commission, like you will finish it uh, faster, you know. So it's mm -hmm. maybe better to now push and work through it. But mm -hmm. actually, it will never end because there was always commission lining up, you mm -hmm. know. So it would be good to like keep this balance, like actually exactly like a studio work that you work mm -hmm. only this time, then you take a break. But I, I kind of didn't, I kind of couldn't do this, you know, like I was just using my like energy for painting, mostly for commissions, like if I already had it, because I started to lose this energy mm. pretty quickly, you know, so I didn't feel like even painting um, more uh, because I felt guilty that I'm not working on my commission mm. at this moment, you know, mm. maybe also had to do with like you managing yourself. Because also like this management part of it 
takes a lot of energy from your general capacity over the day. Did you also start the Patreon then when you started freelancing or did you start it before freelancing? Oh, I started it way after. Uh, I started it in May, actually. So mm -hmm. like half year after I was freelancing. You started a Patreon, you also started uh, prints and yeah, did yeah. you... store, it was pretty roughly the same time. But I think it was actually, when I was starting Patreon and um, and store, it was already the time when I felt like, I like when I started to lose energy for painting. So it was actually something I could take care of, you know, still in like a business related case. Mm -hmm. But I like for Patreon, I thought like it will actually allow me to do more personal work because then I can mm -hmm. like I don't need to depend as much on a commission. You know, if I like if I have some money from Patreon, like then I can at least cover some of the, you know, like rent or stuff by doing my personal work, by sharing my knowledge, like, you know, stuff like that. So I think so, like, now, so now your I'm energy, gonna... your energy shifted, basically, like you from only artists to also your own manager and yeah 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 so um um how was the experience for you because you were very active on patreon i saw like when i started my patreon um i was just seeing you like just um posting every every day like a new tool yeah. a new uh, tip so i'm curious like how much time did you spend it and um how much gave it I don't want to say gave it back, but um, mm -hmm. how how much did you felt rewarded of it? Yes. No? So um, I spent way, way more time than it is like, uh, you know, for what I was earning uh, from Patreon. But I but I really spent a lot of time. It, it like, But that's that's because I I was freelancing in a way like I just didn't want to paint so much, <laughs> you know, so I was actually. Uh, yeah, it's. it's It is a bit weird because I knew I had commissions that I had to do, but if it was like um, another group painting, it was taking ages, you know, and I felt like, ah, I don't really want to work on it this day. So I would do Patreon stuff and it was like an excuse, you know, that yeah. I can work on Patreon stuff. It's still productive. It's like another tutorial or actually mm -hmm. book that I was writing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot. it was a lot of material. Uh, so I felt like if I work on that, it's still productive, but I wasn't really earning for it, you know, because because the amount of like that I got from Patreon wasn't enough to cover my expenses, you know. Mm -hmm. So so actually, like in in these terms, I like I wasn't super successful in terms of like earning money at all. Mm -hmm. But actually, I mm -hmm. enjoyed that, you know, like I felt. I can, building you know, the community, having the conversation with the people. Exactly. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like sharing what I know, you know, with mm. people. So that felt. Yeah, I also, I also saw it on your Discord um, because I'm also on the Discord, um, and there's really a lot of like interaction. People are talking. I think people are very thankful for what you give them in terms of like knowledge and everything. Also, when you compare it, like they they um, be your supporter for two two dollars per month or something. And you give them like constantly this amount of content, which maybe has a little bit more value later on that they that they actually have more trust in that value that you produce and bring on a market. Yeah, I mean, even though actually people will tell me that it is a lot and it is super mm. helpful, like, but I yeah. felt like always can be more, you know, it, there always can be better, which is part of my burnout and part of why I am on the therapy now <laughs> because, mm -hmm. because I just pushed myself too far. Do you think like um, that it has also to do with you in generally because you're very ambitious when you yeah. do your things, yeah. right? Yes, so exactly. <laughs> yeah. everything is connected, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the universe, people, the universe. <laughs> no, and I mean, I mean, it is, uh, it is connected um, yeah. because um you know what happened to you in your childhood actually it's like affecting how you feel now and actually this thing because like that i am ambitious and and i want to do you know as much as possible that's why i was staying after work and you're the same you know like because you also were staying and pushing and i remember when you were saying like you want to be the hard the most hard-working person in the room like this is what you said and i felt like no 
I want to be <laughs> the most hardworking That's person. That's why I like it so much, Iga. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing. Like, now when I think about it, mm-hmm. it's wrong. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it, 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 it's like it's, it's a trap. It's, that's why I'm not painting now for a month, you know, mm-hmm. because I just push myself too hard. I yeah, know. also when your room, so to speak, is the whole industry, that's that's a race you can't really win, you know. Um, I think the biggest um, thief of joy is comparison. And if you start to compare yourself with other successful people, um, that's just that's just a trap. Um, like you yeah. said, I think so, and uh, that's also a big part of the growing, of the growth mm-hmm. process as a person and as an artist. But also to see your um, capacities shifting. Like you said, you sh- you shifted basically from an uh, artist which got managed to an artist who has managed himself. All that management thing takes energy away from you. From the outside, as I observed it, you always were super productive, ambitious, you always did your Patreon stuff, you did your prints. And then something uh, very special also happened with the Kickstarter. Oh, and where it starts, because that's actually yeah. very interesting. It, where it yeah, starts. so everything started at Wuga, of course. <laughs> because, yeah, so um, Wagado Chronicles is, uh, well, like it's a universe uh, based on African mythology, and it's uh, created by Alan. So Alan was uh, also working at Wuga, and this is where we all met, uh, actually. And uh, yeah, it was back then uh, when we were still working, um, when we actually met for a D&D. Well, not D&D, because it was like uh, already Wagato Chronicles, but uh, like a session in a 5e setting. And um, yeah, this is how I got to know more about this world. And at least for me, it was also a moment when I was doing... Well, I was doing a lot of personal stuff, but it was mostly studies, you know, because I I never felt like creative or like, well, yeah, creative enough to just come up with my own characters. Like, you know, I, I always admire people who can just sit with their sketchbook and sketch out so many ideas. Like, I'm I'm not really like that. Like, I always needed a reference, you know, like I can actually study. I was doing a lot of studies. Mm. So when... He told me about this universe. Um, I thought like, hey, I would actually like to paint it, you know, like I can help you uh, just illustrating it because he didn't have anything. He, he, well, anything visual, I mean, because he had a lot uh, with, mm-hmm. uh, with a lore, with narrative, with like whole setting. Uh, so, so when I like started reading all of this, like when he told me, uh, about the whole world, I felt like, yeah, I really, really would like to do some stuff. And I didn't think about it uh, back then because it was now, I think it was almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think back then that it would be my job <laughs> one day. So I just, yeah, I, I, I just illustrated uh, some characters and it was my like go to universe. So whenever I was doing some personal work, even if it started as a study, I actually like wanted to uh, push it forward to have it as a part of universe, you know? So even mm-hmm. if it was study from a picture, I would add some stuff to have already character that would suit to this universe, because why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so, and this is, this is how it started. And then uh, Alan uh, said like, yeah, I'm actually planning to create a studio, a company, and I will be, uh, fighting for funding, you know, like talking with investors and stuff. So, yeah, he did a lot uh, regarding this, like a lot of talks, a lot of stuff. I was just still like painting without even really thinking that, yeah, like that I would really join the company. I was just, you know, doing it because I wanted to. Mm. And, uh, And at first, the plan was to actually start at the end of the year when I um, started freelancing. So I knew I'm going to have a time, but I knew I'm not going to have time to work full time because this is the last thing I wanted to do when I started freelancing. I, I, mm-hmm. I wanted to do different projects. I wanted to, you know, be independent on what I work. So I I already told him like straight away that I don't want to join like a full-time employee because I've just left Wuga. So yeah, like the thing with funding didn't work out actually 
until this year, no, this year, we have 2021. So last year, um, mm -hmm. October. So mm -hmm. yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty recently. So all this time, like uh, everyone who was working on the project was, was actually just putting the work after hours. Yeah, and it worked actually. Yeah, like, it got uh, funded very fast. I don't remember how fast, but it was like two days or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Within three days, um, mm -hmm. it was funded. So, I mean, well, funded uh, for a goal on Kickstarter, but of course, like the goal on Kickstarter isn't isn't the whole sum of money needed to create a game. Uh, so it's not like the this is the whole uh, project. Mm -hmm. Because we also got uh, we got support from Riot uh, at this point. Still, it's not entirely full time, so I'm still like a freelancer. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, but I but it is definitely like m most of my time uh, in the week is still covered by by this studio work, which is which is amazing. And like for me, it's now a super super like a best deal uh, I can have because this is the project like I really like. Uh, but because I got um, well, a position of first, like, well, art lead, but actually now uh, art director, because I'm mm -hmm. defining the whole art style of the game and like leading the whole art team. Mm -hmm. So it's also like a huge new thing for me, you know, like, because I, I, I've never managed a team. I mean, I did like in some university stuff, like recruitment. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it's nothing connected to the industry. You know, completely, completely new experience. Like I'm learning a lot as well. And it's not only painting, which in mm -hmm. this case is is super great because, um, yeah, I'm 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 burned out now. I don't really. Mm -hmm. I you don't, don't want to paint. paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so, but when I see it as a whole, like you grew so much in that short in that short amount of time. So it was basically one and a half year, and you grew like exponentially, um, just by leaving i want to say comfort zone of of a company basically it was worth it right yeah in the, oh yeah of course like i i cannot imagine like i really cannot imagine staying in the same place and mm. still working on the same same stuff because yeah 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 i i mean it's comfortable it's definitely comfortable i cannot say for everyone because people are super different and i know there are those who value actually comfort and that they have, you know, stable job and they can take care like of anything else they want to after, you know, after work. They don't need to mm -hmm. paint, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe because they just don't want to, you know, like chase for work any further because this is enough uh, mm -hmm. for them. But for me, it was always like I was working on my personal stuff because I knew I don't want to stay in the company. like. When I was joining uh, Wuga, I already knew that I plan to stay there two or three years, and I want mm -hmm. to move forward. And what would you what would you recommend someone who is in the same kind of situation as you before, but um, is unsure about what to do? Like, if the person has the, the desire to do something new but doesn't really know how to approach it, or is mm -hmm. unsure and has no real clue of the market, the industry, um, what would you recommend, Justin? Well, I would I would first think like focus on something you actually would like to do except of your uh, you know studio job because like I had quite clear image in mind of what I can do and what actually my portfolio shows that I can do because this is important because like if you don't have portfolio of the stuff that you want to work on then no one will hire you <laughs> on for this stuff that's mm. why that's why for me it was super important to work on personal stuff because i knew that if i do it now i can get commissions for what i like to do not for what i have from muga for example that's why i didn't include much stuff from muga because i just simply didn't want to work on the same stuff yeah know? makes sense yeah so if you for example if you work in the studio and you do some zombies but you hate doing zombies but the only thing that you have in your portfolio is zombies then people will hire you to do more zombies you know like that's, that's as simple as that uh, yeah. because they don't see anything else you can offer you know and if you work on your personal stuff and then you have this thing in your portfolio then mm -hmm. people will like you to work on more and usually the stuff you like to work on will result in better quality because it shows that you enjoy doing that i like 
for example, I, I've noticed already that for me, like the super complicated illustrations with background, mm. they were all, they always felt like I this is something I think I would really like to do. But every time I did uh, this more complicated illustration, then I felt, man, it's taking so long. Like I don't <laughs> want to do this. <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it's like the results are great you know because like mm -hmm. if i put a lot of you know hours to it but do i really enjoy this process you know of like rendering mm -hmm. stuff to death <laughs> like yeah i'm not sure uh, so yeah. so this is also like my thing like if if you sit after work and you just you know work on something super intuitively and if it's like a portrait for me then maybe mm -hmm. actually the portraits are the thing like i you know would like to want, work on most you know mm. so so maybe on the other hand you shouldn't really force yourself to do portfolio pieces because you will have to force yourself to do work in this regard mm. i think it also depends on the the, the type of person some mm -hmm. people push their personal work really far some people i think most of the people have to push themselves as you said to the point that they really say okay i spent another five days on that thing to eventually put yeah. it in my portfolio um yeah, it's also yeah. It's a, it's it's the curve of creativity. You start with something and you have so much ideas and you do it, do it, do it, and then it gets flat and then you're like, oh, now I have to push push through mm. to just get it done. Um, yeah, but yeah, but I'm, I'm I really think I'm thinking now that if it really makes sense, you know, to really push yourself so hard because this is exactly what I did with commissions that. I I had like a you know huge illustration to do and the last days of work you know on mm. this thing it was madness like it's like you literally force yourself to sit in front of the computer and this is what what caused my burnout because I just didn't mm. want to do that anymore like I didn't want mm. to sit and paint one thing for god knows how many hours you know <laughs> mm. so you know maybe maybe it's not even about that like pushing yourself so hard for to do portfolio pieces because maybe if sketches are your thing maybe you can actually find out how you can work from sketches you know maybe. yeah i mean pe people get hired sometimes just for line art for designs exactly, um, exactly. they so only do that in studios also yeah. maybe you don't need, necessarily need to work on the full illustration for yeah. stuff so if it's like visual development it's usually also more more concept work right like sketching out ideas some more loose stuff than you know render 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 mm, like talking about everything since now like so, so you're to your status quo and i know you a little bit i would say do you have any future goals plans for now mm. um like yeah. taking that whole COVID thing to the side without yeah. thinking about that but your goals in the future if you asked me one month ago mm -hmm. I would say something different now. <laughs> okay. because, because yeah, like uh, I remember, well, first of January, like uh, plans for for this year. Like I even wrote it in my post. Like I want to, for example, I want to uh, apply uh, for Magic the Gathering. I want to do more illustrations. You know, like finished uh, pieces. I just want to do more. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like crazy crazy stuff like i want to i want to do streaming i want to finally do the youtube channel and mm -hmm. because i i got this you know like burnout and i decided to like completely cut out of everything mm -hmm. uh i'm actually now thinking that i'm not sure if i really want to push myself too much like you know and like yeah i have to do this this year mm -hmm. because I I started to like feel that there are other things besides art <laughs> that I can enjoy and maybe mm -hmm. if I have like the studio work that I have now and like occasionally I can take some commissions like do the cover for for a comic book for example mm -hmm. that I like uh, you know some smaller stuff but not really feeling my whole time with you know commissions and and painting mm. then it's probably better for for everything for for what i paint but also for how i feel 
that you know I can sometimes just rest you know or like take care mm. of my some other hobbies you know mm. like I just started this uh, macrame uh, macrame stuff that I really mm-hmm. enjoy and I feel like yeah it's it's not it's completely not art related you know like painting related mm-hmm. but this is something I enjoy like I can push more well push I don't want to say I can push more because yeah, I can really that, find this yeah. word a little bit too yeah, yeah. much like you know even I'm not sure if you're familiar with this band um, for, from schoolism you know like uh, punch laziness in the face you no. know like the green ones uh, okay but they're like quite popular like you you would get them after every schoolism workshop Mm-hmm. And literally, it, like I was, I was literally doing like some cleanups, and I found this 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 band like punch laziness in the face, and I was like, <sighs> <laughs> I threw it, it away, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Because yeah. You are allowed to actually be lazy sometimes. I mean, it's I wouldn't even call it like you you are lazy because if you call it. You, that you are lazy, but you actually just taking a break or a rest. It's not that you are different. lazy. Yeah. You know, you you are just recharging to be more mm. productive. You know, next time you're working. Mm. But if you work all the time, and you punch laziness in the face, then you just get burned out again. Back. Yeah. So, but you said it right. It's it's not um, when you're just burned out and have no energy left and you do nothing, it doesn't have to do with being lazy. Um, Mm. And I think also, I mean, it's a good point of reflection to yourself that you see (laughs) that like, uh, am I lazy? No, I'm not. I'm really a lot. I I really had to tell myself this so many times, like actually force myself to think that I'm not being lazy. I'm I just need to rest, you know, because I felt every time I didn't paint, you know, and I was lazy, I felt mm. guilty. Um, mm. And this is actually why why it took me so long to, to, to actually do something with it, because yeah. it was already, you know, since almost the whole last year, like it was it was like that, like I was playing video game and I felt like, oh, but I, I should be working on my commission, but mm. I don't have energy. And mm. me feeling in this loop, like of like, I'm not painting, but I should be painting and I feel guilty, but I cannot mm. do anything because I have, don't have energy. So I would, it would result of me just, you know, going Feeling to guilty all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, because no. I felt bad because I wasn't working, but I, mm. I couldn't work in this state of mind, you know? Mm. So it, it was just being mm. exhausted all the time, yeah. but it didn't result in much work. So it would be just better to, you know, like just relax and do something nice and then, you know. And also there's, like you said, there's so much more than art. And I think the problem comes really from us as the point of um, becoming an artist and deciding making art a career. Then it gets really serious and then you realize, okay, there is this industry and the industry is competing. Everyone is somehow a little bit competing because everyone wants to get better and then you try to improve, 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 and every time you don't improve, you feel guilty, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is nonsense because we stop off enjoying the thing we actually decide to do for mm. living, which is also one thing we love. I remember you also were um, traveling a lot. I mean, now it's not possible, but I think that's also a big point um, of balance. Like what inspire you to do art, like is not all the time in art. It's actually on the yes. other side, right? I, I, I solved that problem. I wouldn't say solve it because it's, still here and there but um, for me is uh, thinking about doing incremental steps like if I just do one thing for my own management or my own art skills or whatever it is um, that's fine for me I don't have to I don't have to win the war every day because yeah that's not possible right it's a, it's really a, a marathon it's it, it's never ends and if you stress yourself so much about that you just kill yourself over it yeah yeah this is the time like when i also like at one point i decided that i'm not going to do anything on the weekends for example uh, you know but um what does it mean not do anything because i like then i felt like only painting is actually working 
but I didn't really realize that uh, posting on social media or writing something for Patreon is also work. So it resulted in me working every day all the time <laughs> because the only thing I did was, you know, because I felt like, no, I'm not painting. I'm just, you know, writing a post um, mm. for Instagram or something. Yeah. But it was a, it was, it was all related to work anyway. Even, even it was different kind of work. You know, it didn't need to be painting. It was still work. Mm. You know, so 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 I just didn't have actually any really day off because no. I did something all the time. And yeah, this is only when I realized it like very recently that I just need to take a break from everything you know that's why I haven't been posting for a month I haven't like yeah I even left Patreon for like two two weeks without any notice you know that I mean no usually people <laughs> would uh, I, I think you spent them <laughs> you spent them for five years so <laughs> you can take a break there <laughs> Yeah, so 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 I only after after this time I actually wrote like update that guys um, I haven't been posting, but because this happened, you know, that mm -hmm. I just decided to cut out and and yeah, what man, many people were like super understanding about that. Like I I knew that of course some people are gonna resign, uh, and they did. Um, but I felt like okay, like if they resign, it's it's like it's fine, you know, because because then they. Then maybe they are not there to only support me, but just for the stuff I do, uh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Like I, you clear, now I you feel. Your mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I feel like I don't have to paint all the time to actually feel okay, you know? Because mm -hmm. before I was feeling only okay when I when I've I've done something that day when I felt like I've done something productive, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I did it, paint something that day, then I felt, mm -hmm, okay, then if I don't paint something tomorrow, then probably it's going to be bad humor, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Well, maybe exception with uh, with travels. But mm -hmm. actually, during the travels, I also had to paint something because I got my visual diary, you know, like all the landscape uh, stuff that, you know, that I was doing a lot during travels. So even during my vacation, I was painting all the time because I wanted to paint as much because it was the only occasion that I could paint this place because I wouldn't be back there soon mm. or at all mm. probably at all so yeah it yeah it was like yeah. everything was just driven by painting and you know at one point it might look you know super cool that you know so passionate so motivated and I felt like this like yeah I have this energy and, and when I was um hearing from you know other artists in the studio you know way older than me like oh back back in my 20s i was the same you know and I was like, no that's i can't I, you know like not not it cannot happen that i will you know stop doing that but i already felt mm. now uh, like mm. this like okay now when you know, i would be probably some talking with someone you know who is like 18 or 20 and you know, they're like this yeah, but it also time. yeah, it also has not only to do with priorities, but also with the state of your life. If you are young and ambitious and you want to, I don't know, you want to conquer the world, you have the energy, you have the energy of a super saiyan. But if you're not and have anything to to, yeah, if, I mean, it, it completely changed you. Even if you then like psychologically, you also change. Like your priorities change. You realize, okay, there is more than the thing you just did for the last five years because art can easily be a bubble and for a lot of people art is a bubble they live in that art zone and for them everything is about art like art i was like this city. like i mean I, I sometimes i i still am almost well not mm. i have i had other hobbies like you know going to festivals traveling and stuff fashion mm. uh, but i still would say like most of my life was actually this art bubble you know Mm. all the friends like you know going to events like on the art related and mm. stuff so 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 yeah i can i can totally see how <laughs> how how, how that's gonna be yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah but but actually i also realized like that there's just so so much more i mean 
because I was interested in other stuff already, uh, I felt like now I can maybe push it a little bit more, you know, mm. like doing clothes uh, myself or, you know, like dance, like different, different stuff that yeah. that would just complement me as an artist and not really, um, you know, just take away my time that I could spend mm. painting, mm. you know, mm. it's like so, so, so much. So. Yeah, it also forms your character and it makes you to the person yeah, yeah. who you are. And exactly. if you just do the same the whole time, there's also no but, big change at the end. But it also affects what art you're creating, you know? Because if mm. you're inspired by some things, some stuff, hello Morgan, <laughs> then, you know, then it also shows in your art, uh, you know, mm. what kind of topics you like. If actually this whole, uh, you know, African cultures that I got interested like this is this is when I actually started to create my personal art because I finally found a topic that I'm interested enough to actually transfer it into my work you know mm -hmm. and not just do studies that are art you know mm -hmm. art art yeah so. yeah absolutely <laughs> um <laughs> I think uh, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good point to uh, wrap it up. Is there anything I haven't asked you about our whole conversation that you maybe want to add, or is there generally generally anything you want to add um, that we haven't spoken mm. about? Yeah, just in general, like I think it's good to I think it's good to push stuff. You know, one like while you still have this. A lot of energy you know like use it actually you know kind of as much as you can like of course remembering to you know take a, take taking breaks but also stay interested in the stuff you like besides of mm -hmm. art but it's also true that the actually the faster you will get to the point that you can work in the field mm -hmm. the easier it will get later because i do also get the frustration of people who can't like who don't yet have a job in art And they are frustrated because, you know, they cannot have it because maybe their skills are not there yet. So it actually means they need to practice more and push. So I think it's important to to actually, you know, practice a lot to at least get into industry, like especially mm -hmm. during your studies. I think this is perfect time to, you know, like if I, I was living this um, mantra, like uh, work hard, uh, party hard, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so... <laughs> so for me, this was this was good. I don't know if it would work for anyone, but this actually allowed me to get to work right after studies, mm -hmm. and then you know at least one once you have it, then you can a little bit more like say like relax and still okay, still pushing your skills in a way that you want to do something else after that. Maybe you don't, mm -hmm. but if mm -hmm. you do, then you need to be aware to like do stuff. But if you don't, if you don't want to work on your personal stuff, then maybe it's fine as well, you know, like yeah. then you can like focus to do good job in the studio and take care of something else, which is which is unrelated, like other hobbies. It's it's, it's fine, too. But just just yeah, just maybe to not not finish too early before it actually starts because then it's yeah then it's harder because like if you don't have this art job then how can you actually you know get to this point that you want it to you know mm. you know don't want to get too philosophical <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> uh, yeah um, that's definitely value valuable um, for anyone who's gonna hear that um Iga, uh, thanks a lot for sharing your personal experience um, for this interesting conversation. Um, and yeah, just uh, thanks a lot for sharing that uh, with me and with everyone who's going to see that in the future. So um, where can people find you? Because uh, we also have to do that. Um, and that's very important. Uh, yeah. So, well. Thank you again as well. Uh, and we're, well, pretty much everywhere. So I got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I got my own website and everything is just uh, um, like named by Ixon Art. I will, put it, I, will, I will put everything in the description also okay. so people can find you there. But so basically you have YouTube, you have Instagram, you have Twitter. 
you're on all yeah, social yeah. media platforms. I mean, but YouTube, I'm not so active. Like I just have some time lapses, but I don't mm. do proper YouTube yet. Like I would maybe say, in the, maybe I'm in most the active on Instagram. I would say Instagram. Okay. Uh, I have my art profile there. I have my personal profile there. I have my traditional <laughs> art profile. Like I'm queen and of. And you also have your Patreon. Amount of yeah, Patreon as well. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah. Patreon is more more for like more in-depth uh, stuff like yeah some tutorials or like step by steps mm -hmm. also time lapses like i just post way more uh mm -hmm. this like I, stuff that i think is like more valu valuable for learning uh, mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah i also can personally absolutely can recommend it um i'm also a big ega supporter and uh yeah um thank you so much again for yeah. joining me um it's always a pleasure talking with you and uh, for you guys, if you like this episode with Iga, um, make sure to uh, also follow uh, Iga on all her channels. Um, also give this video maybe a thumbs up and um, subscribe to the channel. And if you uh, want to, I don't know, participate to the, to the conversation we just had today, um, just feel free to write down a comment or join um, Iga's Patreon or um, join actually our uh, Discord community. There's a button uh, on the lower right side of the banner for the Discord. You can just click it and join our art community. Um, other than that, um, thanks again, Iga, and I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank bye you. Bye-bye, guys. You as well. Bye. Ciao, ciao. It is, wait, this is, it's loading. <laughs> <laughs>